Hello and welcome back to the second walkthrough video in the DMP seminar series. The first part is linked above now. Note that this series is for organizers of seminars for music publishers and similar online or real life events. If you are a music company, interested in vanilla DMP, watch the series linked at the end. This walkthrough covers several more advanced topics. In the next episode, we'll cover royalty processing. Once again, we'll start with a new work, and we'll call it Complexity. This time, it will not be a library work, so we move to the Writers in Work section immediately. We have two writers, the first is Carmen, we already have her data in the database. The second writer is John, and his data is entered as well, so we save a bit of time in this video. Then we select roles, enter Carmen's manuscript share, and select that we are Carmen's publisher. Then the John's share. John is not controlled by this publisher. Ok, now let us add a recording as well, we starting by clicking on add another recording. Once again, we'll skip the recording and version titles, as well as prefixes, this will come a bit later, and choose the release date, performing artist and record label. Well, we'll enter a new one. The reason why we are doing this is to play with filters later on. Some works or recordings have more than one title, happens all the time, so we'll enter an alternative title as well. Click on add another alternative title, then enter it. Complex. In the same way, we could enter performing artists separately, if we have no recording data, for example. Let's just save this work instead. In some cases, you need to register one work urgently, so let's do that, select it, choose create CWR in the action menu, click on go button. These are all fine, so just a click on save. If you are interested what the CWR looks like, here it is. In the meantime, John signed up with us, so all we have to do is check this, save, select the work, create CWR, go. But, on this page, we'll choose revision, not new work registration, save. And preview again. You may be interested in examining the differences between this CWR file and the previous one. I'll just explain the very basics. Here is the work title, and this is your work ID generated by DMP. In this row, we have the publisher data, and in the next row we have shares, 50% performance, 100% mechanical and sync. And then the first writer, 25% performance, 0 mechanical and sync. And the same for the other writer. And below we have the alternate title, data about the artist, as well as recording. We'll not go into details. If you are interested, we have a very long series about Common Works registration, with over 20 episodes. It's linked above, and once more at the end. In the second part of this video, we'll add 5 co-published library works, with 3 recordings each. Add new work, we'll call the first one CoPub1. And we select the library release, this was explained in the first walkthrough video. Co-publishing is when one writer has more than one original publisher, and in our case, we'll have two writers, both published by the attendee publisher and another one. In DMP, both seminar and production versions, no other publisher can be entered. For this use case, this is not required. If you still want to do it, I'll put a link to the commercial solution that has this feature, and many more. Ok, so we entered four writer in work rows, two for each of the writers. We entered their roles as well. We then enter the shares of each writer published by each of the publisher. And for the first two, we select controlled. That is how you enter co-publishing in DMP. Ok, let's move to the recording section. You must enter at least one field in each section. Remember, you can leave the titles empty of the same as work title. In the second recording, we'll use the suffix, bed. This will add bed to our work title. You will see what I mean in a second. In the third, we'll use the suffix, no sin, sorry. No synth. Now we can scroll down and click on save and continue editing. This button because we want to be returned to this work. We then use it as a template for the next one. All we have to do is change the title, presuming that the writers, shares, publishing as well as versions are all the same. Then we click on save as new, and repeat the process for each of the following works. 
See, this version is now called CoPub 2 bed. The next one will be CoPub 3 bed, etc. By using one work as a template for the next one, you can enter all the metadata for an album in very little time. Sure, you will probably use some time to assign ISRCs, and not everything is always exactly the same, but you get the point. We can use the breadcrumbs to get to the list of works. Then we'll use filters on the right side, let's see. I will click on today, the first half of this video was done a few days ago, so this will give us our 5 co-published works. Then we quickly create the CWR file, ready for delivery to a CMO. Let's have a look at the file. Each of the works has two writers, one controlled publisher, one unknown, which is not required data, one recording row and two alternate titles. If we entered ISRCs for the recordings, then we would have three recording rows for each of the works. This is because CWR2 has some legacy issues. Production version DMP has had support for CWR3 for years, but it is still not in any of the societies. So, it is not yet present in the seminar version. Well, here is what the CWR 3.0 file would look like. C, three recording rows in the first work, each with a recording title, same as work title in for all three recordings, and different version titles for two recordings. You don't see it? Well, you don't really need to understand CWR to use it for registrations, but if you want to learn more, here is our CWR series. Here is the series about aforementioned commercial solution that green thing. And here are series about the production version DMP, as well as DMP seminar. Next time, royalties. Keep watching.